Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another live edition of Mafia Roundtable with Dominic Sakali. Glad to see everybody's on, everybody's coming on to the show. Um, we're here to rock and roll today. So we're going to give you stuff never heard before, and it's going to come out. I'm going to be reading off the notes I wrote. This way everything goes in chronological order nicely. And then I'm going to stop periodically and give you my suggestion on how things transpired, what happened, what I would have done. I can't believe how these idiots <laughs> get arrested before then, uh, to tell you the truth. There was too much bantering going on, especially you're taking out a major captain in a crime family. To me, it was just uh, too many people knew. Too, it, it was ridiculous, totally ridiculous. I mean, it was a simple hit. All setups are really easy. They're not that difficult because you're luring the person in. You're bringing him in to get killed. Um, one way or another, it's a deceitful move, or whether it be somebody close and, uh, you know, it's just ridiculous. Too many people knew about this. And again, I'm surprised, uh, it, it, nobody told way beforehand, but you know, shame on them for letting the world know. Um, also before we get started, Remember our sponsor, EG Vodka. Go to egvodka.com, order it today. I just got word, guys, all the pre-orders. Um, they should be going out next week. Uh, you know, I think it's in route from the distributor to the liquor store. Uh, the liquor store that will be dispensing in California. So um, be prepared next week. Tomorrow I have a call with them, so I'll know. And I'll be able to tell you guys. Um, and also tomorrow's show will be a little bit later uh, because my call's at 12 o'clock with the distributor. So the show will probably be going on about 1230. Um, so go to egvodka.com, order your vodka today, 100% organic. And we're going to be discussing what's important. I'll let everybody know a subscription base for my subs. So hit that subscribe button. There'll be a lot of gifts coming out, and uh, we'll be doing a lot for them. Also, go to themanshot.com. Not only do we have the erectile dysfunction, we have Mind Drive. This is a, similar to Adderall, but over the counter. Uh, it's not prescription. You take two in the morning, two at night, and you feel focused. You feel energized. You keep on going like the Energizer Bunny. So go to themanshot.com. Order your Mind drive today. Also, erectile dysfunction, fill out the form. Doctor will get back to you. Everything's confidential, private, and you'll feel like you're, you're in your youth again. So, and guys, I have to do this periodically. This is how we pay the bills and we promote EG Vodka. So, uh, bear with it. Remember, all this information I'm bringing out, not a paid channel, not behind the wall. I'm giving it to everybody. Everybody has access. So, I'm here for you. I need you to have patience. Be here for me. Support the vodka. Support the man shot. And, um, you know, you won't be disappointed. That's for sure. You will not be disappointed. So uh, let me hit. Got a contribution already. Good evening, Dom and Maddie. Maddie's not here yet. Um, she's doing what a wife should do. Clean the house. No, I'm just joking. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Dom, any funny stories about the life? Send in love from Ireland. Ireland in the house. We'll be going out there very shortly. Um, do have funny stories, but let's go into the George Sasha murder. So <clears throat> Messino and Sal Vitale were sitting alone at a table. Messino instructed Vitale to get with Tony Green, a.k.a. Tony Erso. And Tony Erso had a gun and a silencer. So Vitali was to get in touch with Paddy DiFilippo. Messino already had spoken to DiFilippo and wanted them to take care of George Sasha. Uh, Vitali to take care of George Sasha. Vitali understood that meant Messino wanted Sasha killed. Sasha, George Sasha, was a capo in the Bonanno crime family. He, bound, he was from Canada and controlled the Bronx with Paddy DiFilippo. Messino told Vitali to let DiFilippo know, let DiFilippo do. Patty DiFilippo was a captain in the Bonanno crime family, but let him do and plan the way he wanted to plan it. Um, and also let DiFilippo know that Graziano, T, Anthony T.G. Graziano, 
had somebody, a kid named Danny, if he needed a stolen car to use for the murder because they were going to kill George in the car. Johnny Joe would be driving. George would be in the passenger seat. Pay D. Filippo would be sitting behind him in the uh, back seat. Uh, Mancino and his wife, Josephine, were going on their vacation to Cancun, Mexico the following day. And that's when Messino wanted it while he was away. So it would give him uh, an alibi that he wasn't around and it wouldn't look like the Bonanno family ordered it. But that's that's the way people move in the life to try to um, get them out of being the prime suspect. By the way, this is straight Gatorade. No vodka in here because a lot of people saying I'm an alcoholic, so. Um, okay. So it's ridiculous what's said on the internet sometimes. The next day, Vitaly used a payphone to call Urso at Urso's home. That's what I don't understand. You're calling, God forbid, the home, usually in the homes that tapped. Why would you use a payphone? Like, go to his house. Knock on the, but then again, surveillance, get the pages. They had the pages back then. So even throw away phones. Like, I don't understand this. This was 1999. Okay, you're using a pay phone, but have them have a, a throwaway phone or a pager. Well, you page it. Why are you using a house phone? First mistake. First mistake. Uh, Vitaly told Urso to meet him later on, the usual meeting spot. That was off of exit 19 of the Southern State Parkway. Vitaly met Urso and told him that he needed to bring the toiletry case. In this toiletry case, it was given to Urso years back. There was a 38 caliber with a silencer. Now, people, I myself, I never had a 38 automatic. I'm sure there is one, but educate me if there is or isn't. Always my automatics were a 32, a 380, 9 millimeter, 45. And then of course you have the Heckel and Koch. You have all the different, all the different ones now. But back in the day, I remember 38s being revolvers. There could have been a, a automatic, but I want the somebody answer me on this and um, let me know when we're asking questions. Um <clears throat> Vitaly then called Di Filippo around the time and left a message for Di, Di Filippo to call him back. Di Filippo's home number. Okay, another mistake. Why are you leaving messages? Second one, you're leaving on a home number. That's ridiculous. Um, they got in touch with each other. They agreed to meet at a diner on First Avenue and 79th Street, Manhattan. <clears throat> Vitaly and Di Filippo met at the diner upon the time agreed. Uh, Vitaly said he heard he got he heard that Di Filippo had a contract, which they knew. Di Filippo said the guy referring to Messino wanted it done right away. Vitaly asked Di Filippo if he had a plan. What was the plan? So Di Filippo told him. Di, Di, Di Filippo said he was going. I'm just going to say Patty for short. It's, it's easier. Patty said he was going to have Sasha get into the car. Johnny Joe would be driving the truck. Johnny Joe. SUV, um, and then that um, Pai Di Filippo will put one in the back of his head and shoot him. And at that time, Vitaly asked him, listen, we have a guy to get you a stolen car. The, uh, Patty said no. He felt that Patty felt that Sasha would be leery of a strange car, but it would be good to get into Johnny Joe's SUV because he was familiar with him. He wouldn't think anything strange. And that was a good point by Patty. You know, going into a different car, two guys, one sitting behind you, something's fishy. Um, and Di Filippo said that Messino wanted Sasha to be left in the streets so they could tell the Bananos in Canada that Sasha was killed by a drug deal that went bad. And also another move that try to deflect, take away from them. So... They had discussions of the plan to kill Sasha. Uh, Vitaly tried to convince Di Filippo to use a different vehicle, but Patty wouldn't change his mind. He was adamant. And that was a smart move on Patty. I got to give him that. Uh, because he knew the individual. He didn't want him to get leery 
Like all of a sudden, it's a strange card. No, no, no. You know, and I know the feeling, myself included. Michael knows when we were battling, wanted me to go to different meet locations, set everything up. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Doesn't work that way, Michael. And these locations were out of the neighborhood in different areas. I'm like, why would you change to strange areas? I didn't. No, I knew what time it was. So, uh, Vitaly returned to the vehicle and with the Stefano. Uh, once in the vehicle, Vitaly looked at the toiletry case and 38 caliber and silencer was in there. There was also a second gun in the case. Vitaly and the Stefano then drove into Manhattan. So, he had this, the Stefano, who was Joe Shakes. They were, to meet, they actually met Urso at the Nemo Diner, at Nemo's. I don't know if it was a diner. Uh, and Joe DeStefano drove the individual, the Nemo, uh, drove Vitaly to uh, to meet Urso at the parking lot. Where Urso gave him the toiletry bag. There was two guns in there now, one more than before, but the silencer was in there as well. Vitaly and DeStefano pre proceeded to the York Grill on York Avenue. It's eaten in the 80s and 90s in Manhattan. I've been there many times. Excellent food. So if you're in you're New York, it's still there. Go there. Um, they left the case on at the seat of the restaurant. When they entered the restaurant, they met De Filippo, commented to Vitaly that maybe we should get rid of the toilet toiletry case. So what they did, they gave the case to Tony Greco, the owner of the restaurant for safekeeping. Greco took it, put it in the back. Uh, Vitaly de Cestefano de Filippo then had dinner. The group was, didn't receive a bill at the York. It was comp, but they left a, a cash tip. So comp means where they don't give you a bill because the owner knows who you are. And you're basically they were around the bananos. After dinner, the this the Stefan retrieved the toilet toiletry bag from Greco and gave it back to Vitaly. Outside the restaurant, the Stefano stepped away. And Di Filippo and uh, Vitaly, they had a discussion. He gave him the toiletry bag. Di Filippo said he was going to leave a message for Sasha at Sal's jeweler store on Tremont Avenue in the Bronx. And the message was for uh Di Filippo and um, Sasha to originally meet at 70 Street, 79th Street and 1st Avenue at a specific day and time. Vitaly believed that the meeting meeting time may have been around 8 p.m. So this could have been about 8 p.m. at night that they were supposed to meet. Uh, Vitaly said that would be around that night. De Filippo said that Johnny Joe Sprio was going to drive, meet Sasha. Sprio was going to use the white utility van that belonged to a relative. Uh, Sasha was going to be lured at the meeting with Patty over uh, fabricated beef between Sasha and Patty DiFilippo. So they were going to try to create it to lure him down there into the city. Um, Vitaly and, Fli and DiFilippo, ent after that conversation, Vitaly and DiFilippo entered the Sestefano's vehicle. Stefano had a moonroof. The moonroof was open. As he's driving, uh, De Filippo opened up the toiletry case, took out the 38, put the silencer on, put one in the chamber, and then pumped one, a shot, when I say one, out of the moonroof to see if the weapon was working properly. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Was working properly, and it was. After driving around for hours, um, so that was it. it. They drove around, they left, and that was it. A few days later on the night, De Filippo said that Sasha was going to be murdered. Vitaly drove into the city, and he drove all around the city to see what went on. And lo and behold, after about a few hours not seeing anybody, Vitaly got out, went to a payphone, and called De Filippo's number at his place in the city. Uh, Patty was home. Patty came down and ensured and told uh, Vitaly, everything's taken care of. It's done. He's gone. And that was it. And the Bible is going to be left thrown in the streets in the Bronx. 
uh, to make it look like, you know, it was a drug deal that bad. The next day, Sasha's murder was written in about the newspaper, the articles. There was a witness that said there was a red or maroon van that dropped off Sasha's body. So, already, there, you know, things weren't looking good. But luck may have it. They got away with it. De Filippo beeped and beeped uh, Vitali. The next day, Vitali called uh, De Filippo back to arrange a meeting. Uh, they met at Nemo's. De Filippo said that he needed Vitali's assistance in getting rid of Spiro's uh, Spirito's vehicle because there was too much blood in it. Uh, Vitali told De Filippo, "Give him a day or two, and he'll get back with him." Vitali then called Jerry Asaro and arranged Asaro to meet him at McDonald's off of the Jericho Turnpike in Westbury, Long Island. At the McDonald's, Vitali told Asaro that he needed to get rid of a vehicle. Vitali and the Saro agreed the vehicle should be left in the vicinity of 159th Street in Cross Bay Boulevard in Howard Beach. A Saro lived in How Howard Beach as well. The keys would be left under the in the car. So car would be dropped off, certain time, date, keys under it. So when Messino returned back from Cancun, Vitaly told him that Sasha had been taken care of, which I'm sure you already knew. He probably read in the papers. Shortly after Messino returned and met Asaro, uh, Saro told Messino, too, there was a lot of blood in the car. So here's too many people and knowing. Again, I don't know why Johnny, Joe, Patty, they just didn't set the car on fire. I mean, douse it, douse it with uh, gasoline all over the place. Or, you know, I'm surprised they didn't have their own strip, their body shop or strip yard to tear it down. But um, I, I don't know. But to each his own, that's, that's what they chose to do. And um, it was um, about a week later, Vitaly and Messino had dinner at on Knapp Street. Messino asked where Di Filippo met Sasha that night. And Vitaly said, first in 79th Street. And Messino asked again, are you sure? He said, first, or was it first in 74th Street? Messino showed him a piece of paper, which it was first in 74th Street, First Avenue and 74th Street. So um, Vitaly insisted that Di Filippo told him it was first in 79th. Here's unwanted bullshit, more banter of talking where you shouldn't be talking. Messino Di Filippo, now Vitali, met at the diner, and Messino showed him the same piece of paper that where he had met Sasha. Di Filippo also said, no, that wasn't the location, but that's what the jewelry store had wrote down. So I don't know how Messino wound up with that paper, but he wound up with a paper. Now, Louis Restivo reached out to Vitali and told him that Baldo Amato needed to talk to him. And it was very important. Baldo Amato met Vitali at the Blue Way Diner in Francis Lewis Boulevard in Long Island. In Long Island, off of, no, I'm sorry, off of the Long Island service road. Amato asked Vitali what had happened with Sasha. Amato commented that it was first Caesar and now George. Amato was referring to Caesar Bonaventura. Bonaventura uh, had been killed. Now Sasha had been killed also. Amato commented that Sasha was his Gumbada. Gumbada means his brother, his godfather, his his heart. Like so, and Baldo was, was a zip. These are zips, grease balls from the other side, from Canada that came down. So, you know, right away antennas are going up, and you know, there could be a war here now because now he's speaking up. And Baldo should have kept his mouth shut. But thank God Bal Baldo wound up getting locked up shortly thereafter. So that saved them probably from getting clipped because uh, having somebody upset, you never show. When there's a hit, if it's somebody close, keep your mouth shut. First words I've learned, keep your mouth shut. So um, Amato also, he, he was upset. He also said that Patty, it's words out there that Patty's the one that killed him. Because Sasha's car was found by Patty's apartment in the city. Another stupid move. 
after they took it, why didn't they move this guy's car? Now, that's another bad move. Or why would Patty meet him right by his house? So uh, they're definitely supposed to move the vehicle. That's for sure. So um, Joe Messino instructed Vitaly because of this, pull all the captains, all the skippers, the capitagines at the wake, at the Sasha wake, and see them. Tell them the administration wants to know if anybody heard what's going on. Please let them know if there's any information out there. You have to play it up that way that we don't know what's going on, that we're looking into it to deflect. But everybody knew it came from Joe Messino. So all the skippers were at the wake. They attended the Sasha's wake except Vito Rizzuto from Canada. He was a skipper up there. He sent Joe Rennie, Joey, a soldier from Canada, to attend in his place, and Messino did not go himself. Uh, Johnny Joe Spiro was made just before that hit or just after that hit. That's when he got straightened out. So <clears throat> after De Stefano now reads the newspaper, the accounts of the murder, the Sasha murder, he commented to Vitaly, what do you think, I'm a dope? I figured it out. I know what happened here with Sasha. And Vitaly didn't make a comment. That's another buffoon. Keep your mouth shut. You can get killed for that. You know, but shame on them for even letting him know, for Sal being lazy and having somebody drive for that. So that's on him. Like, you just, these are things you don't do, folks. It's just... You don't do. Sometime afterwards, um, DiFilippo returned the toiletry bag minus the silencer and the 38 that used to kill uh, Sasha. He disposed of that weapon himself, him or Johnny Joe. Uh, the only thing in the toiletry bag was the second gun. And then Sal Vitale met up with Tony Urso again, gave him back the toiletry bag minus the silencer and the weapon that was used to kill uh, George Sasser. So in approximately about 99, early 2000, Messino sent Vitali and Anthony Urso up to Montreal to notify Vito Rizzuto that he was now the captain of the Bonanno crime family crew in Montreal. Rizzuto's, Rizzuto's father was also a soldier with the Bonanos up there. Um, Rizzuto thought that his father should have uh, the position. But Messino said, no, I want you to have the position. He was younger, more ambitious. He had that swag. And he knew where the power was with the son. So there was also a guy, Big Joe with the Bananos. He was a soldier in Canada. He actually asked Messino, why not let the Bananos in Canada break away from the Bananos in New York? Joe Messino got very upset with him and told him, I better never hear that out of your mouth again. They're here. They're us. We're one. We're family. So with that, a good man died. His life was taken. And it's not a, it's not a good thing out there, people. It's uh, for the kids that are listening, the young thugs in the street. There's no glamour to that. His own friends set him up. Because there is no friends. You have no friends. It's all smoke and mirrors out there. It's uh, to kill or be killed. It's always your friend that walks you in. It's always your brother that walks you in. And especially in the life, it's the easiest way out. We did it with Randy Pozzola. I had to meet Ace. He was going to meet me afterwards, but I knew he wasn't meeting me because he was going to a different place. It's always somebody close to you that takes you out. It's very rarely having a shootout in the street and, you know, very rare, very rare nowadays. So many people died with their friends going to a meeting, a meeting a brother, and it's just streets are dangerous. So for all you kids out there listening, gang banging, you think you're going to make it, you're going to wind up in jail for the rest of your life, dead, or maybe not for the rest of your life. You're going to do 15, 20, 30 years, come home, have nothing. Nothing. World changes. And these prison systems aren't what they used to be. So let's go with some of the comments. Hopefully Maddie's listening. She'll be coming in soon. Thank you for the contributions. I don't see any. 
show your support, Mafia Ramp. I see there's M with a contribution. Let me scroll down. Maybe we'll see them. We got Mike Senegal. Thank you. Did Mikey Nose go in the George hit or did he punk out? That's a good question. He punked out. He was supposed to be there. And I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you for that. Mike was supposed to be there. He made up an excuse. He was sick. Um, Vinny Bashiano loved George, knew this was coming down. And Vinny was grateful. They didn't call him. They didn't ask him. But everybody knew. Joe Massino did ask Vinny, how do you like George? Oh, I love him. He's a great guy. He's like a brother to me. Because Vinny knew if he said something bad, Joe Messina would have definitely had him part of the hit team and Vinny didn't want to do it. And I'm surprised that Vinny didn't tip George off. Even though Vinny knew it was coming, loved George, made a ton of money with George, he should have tipped him off. should have tipped him off, but he didn't. So, And I can't speak for that. So it's I'm looking, I'm scrolling through, see the other contributions that I missed while I was there. Drew, thank you for your contribution. And we have Maddie here, as you can see, with the noise. She comes in with a boom. Uh, Dan Van Etten ordered three bottles to New Jersey, sent a follow-up email yesterday because I may have given the wrong suite number on the delivery address. And I get someone will get it back soon. Uh, Dan no, of the bottles went out. Everything was pre-ordered on the site. If you want, DM me the suite number and your address. I'll be talking to the guy tomorrow. I'll make sure it's corrected on there, that you have it correct. But the orders should be going out next week. I'll let everybody know tomorrow after I speak to the fulfillment center. They told me they would be receiving it. Hopefully tomorrow, the shipment from RNDC, our distributor. So once they send it. But you could DM me on Instagram. I'm on um Dominic Sicali or even uh, Mafia Roundtable. So either or I look, but go to Dominic Sicali, DM me, and uh, just let me know, and I'll make sure I get that right, too. Just give me all your mailing address and everything. All right. Uh, contribution from Mike Snagel. Did Vinny have more respect, or was he more feared than Patty DiFilippo? Seems all DiFilippo guys were all broke. Um. You know what? About Filippo guys, you had Sal the Ironworker. He wasn't a bust out. He wasn't broke. A new guy who got straightened out with me was um, – oh, what the heck's his name? I'll get it in a minute. And with that, he wasn't he wasn't a broke, so he just came out of jail. Oh, little Patty. He wasn't broke. He was, he was an earner. So – <laughs> anyway, he wasn't broke either. Um, as far as Vinny, Vinny had a ton of respect in the Bronx. Ton of respect. Vinny was sharp. Patty, stand-up guy, just wasn't well liked. He always had a puss on his face. Um, I, I maybe I didn't care for him. I didn't give him a chance because I knew Vinny didn't like him, so I prejudged him. But uh, Vinny has had the charisma, the car. And he was funny. I remember, I'll tell you a story one day. I'm with uh, Big Ernie Muscarello, and he's telling me a story about when they all went out. I was in jail. They all went out one night. This is years back, probably uh, in the 80s, early 90s, that they're all out. They're at a, you know, they're at a club, and Vinny has on a, like, a bright orange or red sports coat. You know, Vinny was a sharp dresser, though. He'd wear some weird things sometimes, but he was sharp. So they're at the diner, and Ernie, deep, deep voice, and his laugh. Like, when he laughs, he be, and he would laugh. Like, you would start laughing. Like, just his laugh you, you're afraid of. And he says, boy, I was fucking with him about that red jacket. I would, And after a few drinks. He said, I was rolling on the floor. And I can imagine Vinny's face because Vinny would have no shot. But Vinny, a good sport. Vinny probably turned beef red like wanted to kill him. But he stood no shot. But he was a good sport. Got to give him that. 
another contribution I see. Yes, yeah, so it's Dan Van Eaton. He I don't says, have I don't have IG, can't DM. I'll let someone fish it out of the EG Vodka website mailbox. Thanks okay. for the update. All right, good. Put it in the or you know what? My email. D O M M I N I C K C I C A L E at gmail.com. Or you know what? Here, I'll type it in here for you now. Maddie. Thank you. There you go. And sweetheart, I'm not going to get floats on Instagram till we have it up. Okay. I've been having it. See, my wife, oh, there she is. She has the look on. Woo! I'm in trouble. But okay, what else we have? A light told Jean no more Vaseline. So Dom said, I got a, I got a, I got you, little buddy. Oh, they're just going to. Oh, come on, please. Um, Anyone that ever put mitts on would never say something like that. Well, so true. Hey, Dom, how come Vinny did not make Mikey knows after he sent the message? So Thomas Tooley says, Merlino said you robbed your own grandmother, Dom. Yeah, it's out there. It's out there. I robbed my grandmother. And I might even bring... When Joe Barone does come on, he knows the story, but it's funny how after I ratted, it comes out that I robbed my grandmother, the statements. Never robbed my grandmother, and I have relatives that Joe will attest to. It's funny. My grandmother was visiting me while I was in the Witsack units, sending me money because I wound up sending the money back when I came home and got on my feet. But she sent me over $10,000 when I was in jail. And I have relatives that will confirm that. So didn't rob my grandmother. It was a fabricated statement to help Vinny with his case to try to discredit me even more. So that's another lie. But, you know, is what it is. He's going to try anything. And I stated that. I said he would come at me with that. So he could come out whatever he wants. So what else? Oh, by the way, does everybody know that Molino's, I think, cousin? His cousin or uncle is a rat. Is a rat. So yeah. And the same Molino's in touch with him. So ha ha ha. Yeah. So I heard that too. I heard that too. So, you know, don't throw stones if you live in a glass house, folks. Don't do it. Oh, what are we doing? Does Dom want to smoke? No more Molino. Makes no sense. It was his uncle, his father's brother. Thank you. His uncle ratted. So is he going to talk about him? Is he going to bring up stuff about his uncle? So, yeah, he should. Gangster. He's gangster. Dom, seems like you're in better spirits today. Godspeed to Fluff Fluff. Yeah, you know what it really bothered me this morning with Fluff Fluff? That's... At 3, 3.30 in the morning. Listen, I either carry her down. Here's the, here's the picture I have. I'll show everybody. Let me get this off. This is the picture. And I walk her down the stairs like that. <laughs> and she would stand. And then sometimes she'd hobble up. Then all of a sudden, about half hour later, here, boom, 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 boom. She jumps down like a bunny rabbit. Yeah, I miss her. Even Maddie said today, the house is quiet, even though it's a cat. Of course, we, as soon as she hears me, she'll come out. She'll run up. Like, it's just weird. But, yeah, we're missing her. That's for sure. So Drew Cantor asked uh, where there, where there are three crews at the time. DiFilippo had a crew. The Bassiano was promoted and given his own crew and George was a captain and was based out of his jewelry store on East Tremont. That right? No, you lost me with that. Go ahead. Could you say it again if you don't mind? Were there three Bronx crews at the time? Di Filippo? No, had a... no, 
It's just Di Filippo. Uh, actually, Vinny was in Di Filippo's crew, so he wasn't the captain at that time. A uh, Dominic wrote Rat and Cat. Yes, and I have the hat. <laughs> cat and hat and the rat. E.G. coming to England. You know what? I'm going to see if we could ship to England. I know we shipping, we're shipping. we shipping to the Bahamas, so we're working out Jamaica. I'm going to see if we can ship to England. Uh, I'll see, and I'll get back to you. I'll find out tomorrow as well. Uh, Baker's Bale said Patty absorbed his father's crew. Okay, so that's news to me. But I know his lineage, his lineage went back with his father as well. Uh, they keep asking Merlino to address Merlino. Go ahead. Well, you want me to address with Merlino, folks? Tell me. Now we will address it. Let EG come to Belgium. I'll sell it all for you. Listen, Tony, Montana, DM me. We'll, if you have connections out there, liquor stores, whatever, we'll make it work. So as long as, you know, you have to ship a container of it for, for it to be worthwhile. So Danny says, ask Merlino about getting teabagged in county lockup? Um, I don't know. Listen, jails could be rough. I think a lot of stories are fabricated, something like that. I'm sure he might have got cracked. It happens. I heard Michael Knows got cracked, too, and he didn't do anything about it. But, you know, Molino does have a lot of support, a lot of friends, and he is a boss. So I'm sure he would retaliate one way or another if something like that happened. What's up, John, uh, Dom? Is Joe Barone coming on? Uh, yeah, actually, I didn't even have time today to call him, but hopefully tomorrow he'll be on. If not, maybe this weekend. Uh, we'll get him on, definitely. And maybe address my issue, or the issues that are out there, the false allegations about my grandmother. But that's, again, Joey Molino stated he would be telling people the truth. And, again, he's going off of media. He didn't like it. You know what? Funny. What's real funny? When Capisci wrote the story, Chris Pacello punked him, punked him at the arena. And here's what I heard. And I heard it again. I made sure. Joey Molino said something, walked up to him, called him an effing rat. Chris Pacello had words with him, told him to go fuck himself and get the fuck out of here before I crack the shit out of you. Molino and crew walked away. They didn't want the altercation. And it happened on court side. So, but Molino doesn't want you to believe Capisci, but you guys are supposed to believe the story that was in the post. I think it was the post, me robbing my grandmother. So, untrue, untrue. And if I have to, Joe Barone will be here, who's very close with my family and knows what happened. So, only Mikey, what's this? Uh, Dom, before you go shipping to... England, get it in Ohio. I'll be working on that tomorrow. Let me write it. I'll write it down real quick. Ohio, EG. Won't forget, I'll be asking them to try to get it set up over there. And I, I apologize with that. So, again, it says Merlino said that he stole 189000 from your grandmother for her house. Who has the house? No, the house is up for foreclosure. But... People, after I went away, no, I'm not even going to tell the story. I'm not going to go into it tonight because it's another long story, but I'll go into everything. So we'll go into that. Yes, my grandmother did give me 189000 Might have even been 198000 I think. She did lend me the money when I came home. So there's no doubt about it. It was when I first came home. So I had that money for years, years. So um, how many times have you been married? Four times. Fourth is the charm. So actually, my first wife, before I was going away on the murder beef, I wanted a divorce. I came home. She wanted to get back to me. It wasn't happening. Second wife, I was only out four months on that murder beef. Went away. She said she'll wait for me. After I lost my appeal, three and a half years into the bid, 10-year bid, she wanted a divorce. And I gave her the divorce, came home. She wanted to get back to me. Wouldn't get back with her. She wound up passing away when I was away on this last bid. Um, when I was actually away, away in that federal custody, I wound up marrying a corrections officer. Came home. Had a lot of arguments. It's just oil and vinegar. Very jealous, possessive. And that was it. I left. And then, um, you know, went away. Never got married. Had kids with 
two different women. And then um, came home this time, met Maddie. And we've been married nine years, a little over nine years now. So together a little over 10 years. So so the tr the real truth says, Dom, stay away from anything to do with Joey Merlino. He is not an informant and is a legit mob legend. Joey's showing already, um, surpassing many others, plus Joey can walk in his old neighborhood. Yes, he can. Got to give him that. He has no respect in New York anymore. Can't walk in New York. Well, he can walk in New York. Nobody's going to bust the great. Nobody's going to do business with him anymore in New York. That's for sure. And I didn't start. He wants to start saying things. I'll come back. I'll go back at him. So and that's it. I don't back down from anybody. I don't give a fuck who it is. So Joey Molino, no Joey Molino. Trust me. I have a lot bigger and better people looking to kill me. So any other questions? Um, it's just a lot of the, the trolls. Okay. Hey, look, she's getting the language, Charles. <laughs> I like it's, it. It's nothing. In, um, it's nothing. Um... Now, well, now there is Maddie. She sounds like a wonderful person. Yes, she is. She has a big heart, loves her animals more than me, uh, which sometimes I, I'm like, how could you love them more than me? We're getting a smirk out of her, like, no, I'm okay. Trying to, I'm trying to find something oh. that's halfway All intelligent. Right. Guys, if we can't get anything intelligent, I mean, I told you guys a story, it things you like never heard before. Damn. Hey, I hate Damn. you. You're my friend. Uh, okay. You're my friend. You have to hate him, too. Okay, let's see. Here's another one. Since you said Vinny knew about the informant wearing a wire, do you think he mentioned your name on purpose to get heat on you? You know what? A lot of people say yes. I don't think so. I know Vinny. He just runs his mouth sometimes, and that's what happened. Um, he didn't realize. He told him, I'm an acting captain. It was just Vinny, um, just bragging about me. I don't know. I, I say no, but there's a lot of people say, yeah, he wanted to put you under the bus. Listen, at that time, the government didn't even know I was straightened out. They had no clue I was straightened out. And yeah, he tells this guy I'm an acting captain in the crime family. So it happens. It happens. Hey, Dominic. Hi, uh, Joe Martino. Hi, Dom. <clears throat> Did you ever have any dealings with Joseph Diego Calabrese, the boss of South Florida? Uh, no, I didn't. Didn't know. And that was the question I was going to read, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why Dom scared... Of jail, Joey. Don't worry, it's stupid. So, yeah, I'm terrified of jail. I did 20 years in jail. You know, there's people out there on the street. They know. I, I didn't play around. I was one of the real deals in jail. That's for sure. Dom, um, can you explain how being in the life and doing time affected your family, especially your children? What was your relationship with them today? Good question. Um, my daughter. Uh, it broke my heart. The Remember, I was under the SAMS Act, so the first four months I had zero visit, visits. First visit came from the mother of my child with my daughter. And my daughter clinged to me like there was no tomorrow. And she was two and a half years old at the time. And when she saw me, actually, she just turned three. I, when I went away, she was two and a half, May, January February, March, April. She was turning three. And when she saw me, she was with me during the hour. Folks, when I tell you, when there was time to go, she left with her mother. When they went, we went one area to leave, they went in the other area. This is at nighttime. The visiting room's jam-packed. There's about 150, 200 people there. All of a sudden you hear, no, daddy, dad crying her mother's trying to grab her she's fighting her fighting her to come grabbing her i i start crying and i just went to her like the cop looked at me i said don't don't even go there and i went where i'm not even supposed to go i went there and even people in the vision room women were crying crying i picked her up 
And then one of the older cops, they like, Sakali, just sit down over here. Calm her down. Like, they knew. I wasn't moving. I would, there was no way they were getting this kid out of my arms until she calmed down. Finally, after about a half hour, she calmed down. I'm like, sweetie, I'll see you next week. It'll be okay. She went. She started crying again, but it wasn't as bad, and then they left. I mean, and then the cops in the visiting room, when they went to the back room, because you always have one asshole. He wanted, come on, come on, come on, come on. And then the cop who was doing the strip down, he's like, so, Callie, you did the right thing. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, I'm surprised you didn't stay another half hour extra. But uh, that broke my heart. But I had a good relationship with her. The mother came up every other week. As far as my son's mother, uh, it's another story. Uh, so Big G asks, hey, Dom, are, uh, were you a part of the pump and dump scheme? Uh, no, no, I never got involved in that. I heard they made tons and tons and tons of money with the pump and dumps. So no, no, it, that was before my time. Uh, Chad asked, Dom, if you did not get pinched, locked up, do you think you'd still be in the life in all seriousness? Of course, of course. If my brothers were show, get, provided me with loyalty and I didn't see Vinny in self-preservation mode, I stay true to the game. Stay true to the game. But you know what? I'm glad it happened. I'm happy I ratted. I'm at a better place. I don't have to answer to nobody. I don't have to look over my shoulder than somebody trying to kill me. But I prefer only that. In the street, I look over law enforcement and somebody trying to kill me. So at least it's just one. We got another contribution. What's that from German? Yeah. Hey, Dom, just wanted to send all my love and support. You're doing a fantastic show every day. Thank you for all your time and devotion that you're placing into this place. Big E.G. Vodka to bring E.G. Vodka to Australia. And Maddie needs to to pay raise? Pay raise. A pay raise. I do. I pay her enough. I give her a dollar three eighty. She gets a dollar three eighty, folks. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that contribution. And yes, listen, even in Australia, if you have outlets as far as clubs, liquor stores, or Wayward to push it, we'll bring it. We'll, we'll see. We'll just go for the licensing, and then after that, shipping. So if we could bring it to the Bahamas, which is a different country, we could bring it, take it anywhere. just has to be you know worth it at the end of the day. This is from it says Maddie. When you met Dom, what did you think of him? Did you know he was an ex mafioso? You want to tell the story? Or you want me to tell it? I uh, know you can tell it. Okay. When I first met Maddie, it was I was buying an, um, an insurance company. So as I'm sitting there, look, watching the business, I'm like, how can we make the business grow? So Maddie worked at Telemundo, Hispanic television. She was a sales rep there. And, uh, he said, well, I use this lady, Maddie, long and sure of it all. We set up a meeting. I go meet her. I told her I was about four foot eight, five foot, 400 pounds, wearing a pink shirt, dressed up, dress shirt. So, um, and at that time, six foot, maybe what, 170 pounds. I was shredded, shredded. I was running five miles every day. So, um, we're sitting there talking. We talked about 15 minutes of business. The other hour and a half, just personal. How you doing? This and that. Second time I met her, I told her, I said, um, no, I didn't say anything. Actually, we're, we're talking. Hey, would you like to go out to dinner? I told her. I had to get back home. I was on home confinement. So my curfew was like 8 o'clock. So I said, all right, let's meet 5.30, 5, 5.30 for dinner. She's like, no, I'm dog training. I'm dog training. Let's meet maybe seven, eight. I'm like, nah, I can't do it. So she's saying to herself, she told me afterwards, oh, this bitch thinks I'm stupid. He has a family. He's just trying to get some ass. So I'm like. Not like that. Guys. Well, not like that. I'm talking my version. Yeah. So I'll get in trouble now. So now I'll start turning red and sweating. Well, because I'm, I'm classier than that. I know, sweetie. I know. I'm just, you, you asked me to say it. I'm okay, going to say okay, it in my okay, words. Okay, Thank okay. you. So. After that, we do wind up meeting. We, we're out with the guy, Tim. And Tim's looking at everybody's knockers walking by. So she turns around to him, hey, you want to be looking at that instead of listening to my pitch? Go home with your family. He leaves. So now we're talking after the business. And I said, listen, I'm going to be straight with you. 
I feel there's an attraction here. And she says, yes. I said, well, before it goes any further, we haven't even kissed yet. Before it goes any further, I want to tell you, here's my past. Because the reason why I'm telling you, right now it's none of your business. But I want to let you know because I'd rather you think with your mind than your heart. She said, okay. She says, that doesn't bother me. I'm glad you told me. She went home. She said, oh, my God, I'm going to get killed. <laughs> I got nervous and I asked. She got nervous. <clears throat> so with that, we'll leave it at that. And it's been history ever since. Yeah, we... And actually, my mother found out because um, my sister was freaking out. But my mom said, nah, he's Italian mafia. They're okay. Now, if it was Albanian or Russian, Russian, I, Russian I would worry. I would worry. So my mom is a native New Yorker <laughs> and, you know, knows history. Okay. Um, wait, we have one. Cause I like to be fair. Joey's uncle Lawrence died in 2001. You got bad info. I didn't get bad info that he was a rat. I didn't get bad info that he was a rat. He could still talk about dead rats. I'm sure if I died, you're going to talk about me. If Sammy died, he's going to talk about him. So. Uh, John says, hi, Dom. How come Vinny didn't take Mikey Nose out after he sent the message you had nothing coming, considering he was going to be whacked had you not gone to jail? Because that was Vinny's out. That was Vinny's guy running the streets. You know how hard that would be to take him out at that point? Vinny knew he could control Michael, and that was his way. You know, he's... Again, it's called self-preservation, folks. There's another contribution. Joe Hernandez. Hey, Thank Dom, you. Congrats on the 19K. Subs in memory of Fluff Fluff. Thank you. Thank you for that, people. Thank you. Hit that subscribe button. Also, people, look at this. Go to egvodka.com. The bottles should be definitely being shipped out next week. Liquor store has them, they, or they will have them. I was confirmed. I'll let everybody know tomorrow, but go to egvodka.com, order your vodka. You order more than one bottles, the pricing goes down for shipping. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we can work out some type of subscription where we'll get it even cheaper for you. That's that's my goal, to get it out there, a reasonable cost. I want you to try the vodka. I want it out there. And please, people, comment on it. Tell me how you like it and uh, take it from there, but you won't be disappointed. Yeah, and you know, um, there are going to be places we don't have it yet. It's uh, we're well, still in the in the in the first yes, phase of and, marketing. If you know anything about marketing, you're in the first phase. Marketing. And here's another question for Maddie: 100, 100. Maddie, do you fear being married to a mobster with a PPL wanting him dead? What's a PPL? People. Oh, people. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, people want me dead. <laughs> Listen, don't we all have haters in our life? Haven't we been haters? Like, that's that's life. When it's your time, it's your time. Do I get nervous? Did I used to get nervous at the beginning? Yeah. And then uh, I think it was, um, who do I fear most? I fear, I fear, I don't know. I fear not, not um, living life to the fullest okay. is what I fear. Uh, Dom, what's the best movie? What is the best movie ever? You mean mob movie? I like Godfather Godfather 1 and 2, but 2 is my favorite. Once Upon a Time in America was a great movie. Goodfellows and Bronx Tales. I think those were really good movies. Dom, if Vinny got out of prison, would he become a boss? The boss? Um, Vinny would probably lay in the cut. And no, I don't know. If Michael did Vinny wrong since he's been in, Vinny's going to kill him. Vinny will definitely take him out because Vinny doesn't respect Michael. That's that's for damn sure. But, um, yeah, Vinny will definitely take it. Definitely, no doubt. Definitely. So he'll probably take Michael out. Hey, Dom, have you and Michael knows that, too. Michael might even step down for that reason. Good. Have you confessed to God regarding your murders? Um, yes. Actually, I was in a bad place, very bad place, after I cooperated. Um for about four or five years, bad, bad, dark, dark. Uh, then while I was incarcerated, went to church, reading the Bible, um, you know, asked for forgiveness, and that was it. Got to a point, there was a guy, and I'll let everybody know eventually, 
Uh, we had a Woodsack bully who was also in the mafia. Mafia. Oh boy, he punked me down. I was just keeping my mouth shut, not answering. Like, uh, bad, bad. Talk about bullying because he knew I wouldn't fight. It only got to one time he pushed me so far where I turned around and I squared up and he knew it. Like he didn't say anything after that. Like he just, he stepped and my hands, like, like I was ready. He stopped immediately. Like he knew it was on. And, but uh, all the other times he was just being a bully to me because he knew, because I was fearful. It wasn't sentenced at this time. Um, Greg Andres threatened after I put that guy in the hospital, um, they threatened my agreement would get ripped up with all the violence I have in my past. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, you have, Hey Dom, why did you, you were asked, why did you leave? Why did you delete the video with Gene? Why don't you have the guts to stand by what you said? Oh, I do. Gene asked me to take it down. So I did. So as Gene. I stand by everything I said. I'm not. I don't back down from anybody, especially a Joey Molino. So that's for sure. Dom, did you ever meet Jake Lamada? No, I didn't meet Jake Lamada. Dom, do you think about reaching out to Vinny before he dies? Absolutely, I'm going to. I'm going to send him a letter and just see what response. I know he'll definitely respond. Um, you know, and I know he knows I'm going to write him. He knows the way I am, and just like if the shoes were the other way. He would do the same. Dom, do you ever meet the oh, meet the Bronx Bull? No. Did you have did you have respect for the Montreal Mafia family, or were they looked at as outsiders? No, they were bananos. They were bananos. I don't know. You heard here, Joe Messino. No, uh, he made he made Vito Rizzuto, Rizzuto a captain. They were bananos, and uh, after Messino cooperated, Vinny went away. That's when they broke off. So Bomber88 says his cousin Zarat don't mean anything. He can't control his cousin. Who's that? Um, Rubino's cousin, I guess. Zarat. Okay, yeah. No, it happens. I'm not saying that. I know he can't control him. It doesn't happen. Joey is the freaking boss of Philly, period. Yes, he is. Joey is the boss of Philly. But he's on the internet. So to me, and I'll say it again, that's a rat move. It's a rat move. You don't go on the internet. Once a talk... You know what? If he wants to talk tough to me, he do it to my face. Do it to my face. I, I don't back down. I'm not afraid from anybody. So I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for that. But don't say I'm a boss and I'm going to say talk shit. I'm going to talk shit back then. So I'm not backing down. I'm not afraid. So, Chad D., I used to be in the life not big was what you would call an associate or connected guy. And I may be wrong, but it seems like you don't have to, too many good things to say about Boston guys. Who, me? I never say anything bad about Boston guys. I don't know what you're talking about. So, next. Actually, I spoke good about the Boston guys, the, all the Irish guys from Charlestown. So, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Maybe he's talking to someone else. Yeah, oh, maybe you're talking to somebody else, not me. Okay, my bad. You stated a few times that Vinny owed you a million dollars. So, one can only assume... That at that time you were a millionaire. So why did you get so bent out of shape when he needed another 50K for his son? Good question. Then he owed me the money. All my money was tied up in the properties. All the Christmas monies were given out. They caught when they busted me. I think there was only maybe thirty thousand dollars cash in my house that the agents, my wife, my girl was pregnant, let her keep it. Let her keep it. They said you're gonna need this. You know, everything was in properties, in real estate. And um, that's it. So he was supposed to give me things he owed me when they were selling things off. And he didn't. So that's why I was bent out of shape. Because if it's my money coming to me, you're the boss of the family at the time. Make sure I get it. You know, and that's why I got bent out of shape. Uh, hi, Dom. Mob guys in jail, do they have any protection? Do they have protection from any gangs? Um. I'm sure. Hey, Vinny's bouncing around with the Serenios, um, tight. So that that's a Gene story. It's what he told me, got word when he was in there. Gene was in General Pop. So he wasn't in the Wittack unit. So 
we'll see once he comes on if he comes on again if he can and you know i don't want to speak for him but you know he's to me i like gene great guy patrick glenville per crazy phil joey robbed an old woman as she slept he did as personal. listen when you're in the life in all fairness to even joey molino we all have skeletons in our closet. All of us. You're in the life. You do treacherous things. There's very few people that I haven't seen did treacherous things. So all fairness to Joey with that, it is what it is. It's, you know, you do what you have to do to survive. It's just, you know, it's sad, but that's the life. You're in crime. You're crime. Crime doesn't pay. Look in The Sopranos. Paulie Walnuts. What did he do? He went and robbed his mother's girlfriend, the old lady. The money was under the mattress, and they strangled us. So it's by the life. We got a donation from a K. Is there anything? Kevin, else? Kevin? Dom, put a picture of Maddie at your left shoulder on the shelf. We hear so much of her. We can put a face uh, to the voice, just a suggestion. Well, maybe one day she'll come on. She'll come on if she feels like it. It's her choice. I've always made mm -hmm. money behind the camera. <laughs> No, I know. Yeah, with advertising, <laughs> yeah. TV. Yeah. So, uh, what else do we have? So, the, I, I Kevin, think, thank you. This just popped. Oh, put a picture of Maddie. Thank you for the contribution, Kevin. Uh, did you ever work with Salvatore Montaga? Mm. Montaga, Tagna. Salvatore. Yeah, Salvatore. Um, Salvatore. Taglia. No. Montagna. I don't think so. Why did Vinny put Michael in charge? Okay, same thing. Yeah. Hey, Bella, what's shaking? <laughs> oh, but that's a, thank you for even mentioning Bella. Bella, uh, Bella, thank you. Said Maddie, she sends her love and, you know, really nice thank comment. Thank you. Thank so. you. Yeah, it's hard. It's been back to back. So we, we buried, we said goodbye to our pit bull. Last year and a month later, Kayla passed. But um, in between that last year, before that, four months earlier, our other cat passed away. Yeah. So it's been back to back, and we have three here. Um, and some more coming. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. We have another one. Dominic Sicali said that when he was a banana wannabe, he met Bashiano and his longtime Gubada, Gumada, Debbie Kalb at Bartini's in Forest Hills. His intentions were to get me drunk, the tan chiseled Sicali. No, I actually drove them there. We all went to Bartini's together. And when we were there, Vinny put a bottle on the table and we're drinking, we're all drinking. Uh, actually, Debbie wasn't drinking. She was pregnant at that time. And she, she didn't even show she was pregnant. And Vinny gets up after maybe three quarters of the bottle's gone. Vinny gets up to go to the bathroom. All of a sudden, Debbie puts a hand on my thigh. I move her hand, and we're just talking. And that was it. So comes out weeks later, Vinny tried having a hit on me because Vinny felt your true intentions come out when you're drinking. So having Debbie put her hand on my thigh, me moving it showed, like, you know, stop. So... So Rayo says, hey, Dom, big fan, F the keyboard, tough guys. Have you ever heard of any professional athletes being made ever? God bless. Uh, any professional athletes? No. No. Here's another one. Are you actually a partner with Vodka? Yes, I am. There are six of us. We're all equal partners, the six of us. So, yes. Nikki Stewart, Dom, it's a shame Carmine Galante got killed because if he never, Joe, if he never, Joe would never become boss and Hughes would be the strongest family to this day. Well, even if the three capos never get killed, Joe never becomes boss. They wouldn't allow it. And, you know, that's if. But you have to give him that. Like, Joe was a master, master puppet man. He played everybody. And at the end, he not only played Vinny. He played the government big time, played them big time, but he got what he wanted, and that was it. He destroyed his legacy for 10 years more living on the street. So go figure. Did you ever feel a moment when you felt that you were in danger when you were when you were in the life? Uh, the other one in? No. No, not really. I was always secure, comfortable. 
No, I really didn't feel I was in danger. Nobody does really. I have other people do. I can't say. Luck is Bella. Lucky B L O L. Hope you have a great weekend. Now she's probably talking to somebody. Down was father. Louis Giganti, a front for the mob. I have no idea. I have no idea. And Brian says, if you wanted to walk away from the life without cooperating, how would you have done it? I would have never. I would have never. I was too entrenched. I was too embedded in the Bronx. So there's no walking away. Did you ever meet Tommy Karate? No, I didn't. And it's funny. I, I've been all over the prison system. Um, no. Dom is a player. Dom used to be a player. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Back in my day. But my days were short-lived, folks. Again, kids, if you're watching, all my 20s, most of my 30s, uh, 40s, I was in jail. 20 years in prison. So it's not fun. It's not fun. Trust me. Um, and I had nothing to, at the end of the day, when I was worth about $10 million when I got locked up, within the year I was broke. They, everything was taken from me. It was like little vultures out there just coming up on my mind. It was funny. All of a sudden, Michael knows had money to buy two Escalades, two Cadillacs for his girlfriend and his wife, brand new. And this guy couldn't rub two nickels together. So Stephen says, who was the most well-resorted guy you met in the life? Well-resorted? Um, one of the sharpest guys' business, I would say Sally Avellino. Very, very sharp. He's taught me about the stock market. Um, very savvy. Um, then you had Anthony Bawat, street. I mean, just very cunning, witty. Big Ernie. Vinny himself was sharp. Um, yeah, a lot of sharp guys. Tough Tony, another one. Um, yeah, a lot of powerhouses, though, really. So Vinny Vegas asks, any Puerto Rican gangsters you had dealings with, Throg's Neck is filled with half Italians, half Ricans. Uh, no, not really. Only when I was away, uh, a little Chucky Hernandez, Jason Hernandez, my boy, uh, he used to terrorize the Bronx. So, but, you know, we were all good. Uh, uh, Robert Nino did good on stock market. Yes, yes, he um, he had the pump and dump going on. Somebody asked, uh, "Do I think Michael knows is a buffoon?" Absolutely, he he insults the word buffoon. Um, he says, "Some Lucky B says I heard that Tommy is in Colo at Supermax." I have no idea. Oh, Colorado, Colorado. Have you ever met Boy George? I think so. I think he was in Lewisburg with me. Uh, he was part of the one of the heroin cases, right? I think checkmate. Uh, answer, let me know if that's correct, if I have the right person. Uh, do you still keep in contact with non-mob guys that you were that you were friends with? I'm in contact with a lot of guys, a lot of people from my past, people who also cooperated. Uh, there's other captains, there's other heavyweights in the mafia I cooperated, I'm in touch with. Um, and yes, a lot of people from the past. Did you teach me how to shoot? <laughs> Absolutely. She knows how to shoot left-handed and right-handed. Um, I'm both, yes. Ambidextrous. Uh, Bella never knows. My animals are like my kids. It's so hard when you lose them. Yes, it is, Bella. Yes, it is. So it, it's sad. Thanks, Bill, for um, my lovely voice. <laughs> it depends on the tone I'm using. <laughs> Okay, folks, we're going to start wrapping it up now. Remember, egvodka.com. Go to egvodka.com. Be shipped out, 100% organic, gluten-free. Three flavors. We have the regular. We have sage, which is an Earl Grey, great with espresso martinis, uh, iced tea. And then we have the rosemary lavender, excellent with lemonade. And that was created for women egvodka.com, certified 100 organic and gluten-free. Also, demandshot.com, you can get the Mind Drive. It's like an Adderall. Take two in the morning, two at night. It keeps you woo and focused. So get this. Also, Man Shot helps 
any type of erectile dysfunction, even if you're still getting the arousals, but they're not as hard. Listen, do this and you'll be smiling. Your girl be smiling from ear to ear. She might even have to go to the hospital like some other women went. So right? you're asking, where's <laughs> Carrie? Oh, Carrie? Carrie's actually in Miami. We have some major, major deals going on. Um, we're coming out with more products, different products. And also, major deal. If this goes on, we're doing bigger things on the internet. Bigger things. Nah, uh, but Kerry is working. He's working. He's a good guy. Pain in the ass. A good guy. So like GC's comment. Don't oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Before I lose it, apologize. Yes, Boy George was arrested with the checkmate heroin case. Yes, then I was with him in, I think, Lewisburg. He was up there. Dom, easy for me to critique you, but do you think you could have better prepared for the day the feds would come? Seems you rely too much on the Bonanno family and not on your own family. You know what? They got me unexpectedly. I didn't think they were coming. I really didn't think, like, Joe Messino, I mean, how am I supposed to know Vinny's talking about – in the newspapers, when we killed Randy Pozzolo, um, it said Genovese crime family. I read in the, one of the first paper, the newspaper articles, they accused, it was a, no, no, they didn't accuse, they said Genovese crime family associate. So right away, that, that was off track. How would I know Vinny would be telling Joe Messino that I killed Randy and Joe Messino would be wearing a wire? So no, I wasn't prepared. If I had any inkling, I would have been cashing out of all my properties, putting money to the side, but I didn't. And I wouldn't have gave up $365,000 that Christmas. That, that's for damn sure. With that, everybody, peace, love. Kids, stay out of the streets. Streets on for you. Stay tuned for tomorrow. I'll be on between 1230 and 1 p.m. tomorrow because I have the phone call with EG, the distributors. I'll get back to everybody with their shipments. But I think if you go online, I'm pretty sure I was told that they came off of the pre-order. Why, man? Sammy Fredo is oh. saying, who's the biggest pain in the ass, Carrie or Joseph? Oh, <laughs> one of our uh, film guys asked, who's the biggest pain in the ass, Carrie or Joseph? Well, I'm upset with Joseph, and I'm not upset with Carrie, so I have to say Carrie. <laughs> I like that one, the way I twisted that. I'd say Carrie's the biggest pain in the ass. Carrie's a shit disturber, but funny as a bastard. Give him a few drinks. Listen, I had to leave him the other night in the restaurant. He got me so aggravated. I walked out. I paid the bill. I walked out. He's calling me 15 minutes. Hey, you in the bathroom? No, I'm home in bed. He's like, you left me here? I said, yeah, I paid the bill. I couldn't. You weren't going to berate me in the whole place because I would wind up strangling him. So I had to leave. All right, but so, with that, yeah. everybody, I'll be on probably 1230, 1 o'clock tomorrow. I'll post it. Uh, my meeting shouldn't be long with the... Um, the people that distribute the liquor and I'll have questions and I'll have more stuff about the subscription base. So with that, everybody have a wonderful evening. Thank you for all the comments. Haters too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. So you get notified when I'm doing my shows, everybody have a wonderful night. Peace out. Much love. They want you to split some bars and do an EG